Battle Royale is a video game genre that took the world by storm, starting with a game mode called Minecraft Hunger Games. Minecraft Hunger Games was simply a game mode in the still popular game Minecraft. Now, I know it says Minecraft is the name, but that's besides the point. Even though Minecraft Hunger Games was a Battle Royale, it differs from its successors. This game mode has a max player count of 24 to 48 players. Instead of dropping out of a plane or a battle bus, all players have spawned together. This may sound like a minor change, but it's actually not. Everyone being in the same area would make you play the game harder as there would be many players around you punching you to death. This would give you motivation to loot fast and haul ass. And of course, like any other Battle Royale game, it had multiple ways to win and lose. Here's a quick rundown. Deathmatch. All players have spawned at the same area. If there are 3 to 4 players left, they would have to try to kill everyone in 2 minutes. As the border shrinks, if a player doesn't stay near the border, they'll get struck by lightning. Tiebreaker. If there's two people alive when the timer runs out, the one with the most kills would win. As you can see, this was already very unique. This would cause many creators to rake in views like Bajan Canadian, Captain Sparkles, and more. At the time of people playing this, no one knew of how the genre of Battle Royale would take the world by storm years later. H1Z1 is a Battle Royale game that rolled with the basics. You drop to an island, loot the area, and try to be the last person standing, which is similar to Minecraft Hunger Games. Now, H1Z1 had a moderate size of a player count. Many players were playing this game. It was so popular, a tournament was once on TV. And of course, with popular games comes popular players. Players like Ninja, Shroud, and Nadeshot, all people are known in the gaming community just by the mention of their names played this game. This had influenced many of their fans to play this game, making the game even more popular. H1Z1, like Minecraft Hunger Games, would be one of the biggest influences to the future of Battle Royale games. PUBG one of the most successful Battle Royale games ever. The highest concurrent players overall were at a raging 3.24 million players in 2018 of January. On Steam it had a whopping 553,000 concurrent players, making it the third most concurrent players on Steam under Counter-Strike and Dota 2. PUBG is similar to H1Z1 but with a few differences. We'll start with the similarities. Jump onto an island, loot, become the last player, and win the game. The similarities are exactly the same but there are differences that make PUBG unique. For one, it was on multiple platforms, the best thing any video game could do. During the spreads of a game like Wildfire, people on Xbox, PS4, and PC could enjoy this game without being locked behind a one console exclusive. Later on, they even released PUBG on mobile devices, which increased the player count for PUBG even more. This game also had a third and first person mode, which added variety to it. PUBG was even more popular than H1Z1. As said in H1Z1, this attracted many popular streamers like all the ones mentioned before. This was the most popular Battle Royale game at one point, but like all things comes the predecessor and the successor. Sometimes, even terrible ones. <sighs> the Culling, one of if not the worst Battle Royale game ever. The first one of this game was below average, the highest player count was at 4,000 players, the game later died out due to the lack of pretty much anything, but that didn't stop the developers from making a sequel. Only that this monstrosity is way worse than the first one. The Culling sequel is a literal copycat of PUBG. From the looting mechanism, the map, and the UI is practically a clone. So look at the side by side, it looks exactly the same. The game was so bad it's not even purchasable anymore. It just got stripped from the store. What I'm about to tell you next may surprise you a lot, even more than the clone. Here we have the Culling Origins, the third and worst entry of this franchise. Not very much people played this game either from how much of a dumpster fire it is. In order to play a game of Battle Royale you have to pay. Not as in for the entire game, but for each match. The YouTube community and gaming community caused a ruckus, and rightfully so they did. And after that, the culling added 25 tokens to the start of the game. Tokens for each match, of course. If you want to see the gameplay of this game, I'd recommend you watch the Venom Wolf X's video. He plays a game so you don't have to, and his videos actually shows a lot of gameplay, so if you want to see that, it'll be in the link in the description. Even though the culling wasn't talks in the community, no one is praising it. With bad games comes a downfall. Now, the game's practically dead. No one's talking about it on YouTube, and sure enough, not on online parties. The culling was a failure of a franchise. If they continued to make the first game better and continued onward, they may have had a chance to make a good game, but in this instance, you can see that they were blinded by the money and practically have no chance at all now. When you hear the name Fortnite, what comes to mind? Okay, let's get back to the video. Now surprisingly, the first mention or video of Fortnite was even a battle royale. A video called Fortnite Teaser Trailer is released in the year of 2011. The trailer didn't show or mention anything about Battle Royale. It showed an animation of people building and then what seems to be a zombie. The concept of this trailer is surprisingly still being used. Years later when Fortnite was released in beta, two versions of the game was released. A game called Fortnite Save the World and another called Fortnite Battle Royale was made as a side game. Shown by the trailers Epic Games has released, Save the World would be the main game. That eventually changed when Fortnite Battle Royale jumped in popularity while Save the World didn't grow much. 
mostly because of how Battle Royale's free while Save the World wasn't. In the beginning, Fortnite stayed in the basics. You dropped, looted, and whoever was the last one standing would win the game. Due to the increase of popularity, Epic started to release seasons. Each season would include skins, emotes, banners, and more. This would make Epic money, but the inclusion of the item shop would make them even more. If someone with no V-Bucks saw a skin they liked, they could buy some V-Bucks and buy the skin or cosmetic they liked. This would continue to make Epic millions and billions of dollars. Like all the other games mentioned, popular people would play the game. The game would even start some careers. Tifu, Myth, Daquan, and more got popular or even more popular as some people playing the game already had a name in the gaming scene. Fortnite would eventually become one of the most popular games in the world. You'd hear it everywhere. But of course, every popular thing gets backlash. The news would eventually talk trash about the game simply because of it being popular. Parents who simply didn't take the console or PC away would blame the game as well. This didn't stop Epic, however. They continued to make their game even more popular with the addition of events. This would bring millions together to watch either the Meteor Shower, Rocket Launch, or a giant Travis Scott taking over the whole map in a concert. The game would also bring big companies like Marvel and DC together. An Endgame event happened before the movie as well as a Batman and Catwoman skin. They also added movie skins as John Wick characters made into the game. They even added Deadpool and the X-Force to the game. Fortnite would add new skins, weapons, map changes, and a whole new map at one point. The dedication of work put into Fortnite made it the largest and most popular battle royale of all time. Apex Legends, the next successful battle royale game. This game was very popular at the start, with a unique style of adding multiple legends instead of reskinning the player with no difference of gameplay. This added multiple abilities and playstyle to the game. Bloodhound could scan the area and see people through walls, he could be played as a scouter, Lifeline could use a dock to heal and revive players, she would be a healer, and Kasa could place gas traps by door to play as a defense legend. The thing Apex was doing here was so unique and unseen in a battle royale game. It had an Overwatch and COD esque to it. The game is the most popular, but it did go high for a while. For days it was the number one game being streamed by Twitch, but eventually it went down as Fortnite went up again. Apex is still alive and well today, as new skins, a battle pass, and more have come to the game. In Season 3, a whole new map came to the game with unique locations added. They also added something that others don't, that being both maps are playable. For a certain amount, you play with King's Canyon, and the next you play with World's Edge. Another thing they added is new weapons. New weapons are added to the game sometimes. They added the L-Star and Havoc Rifle, which are both, in my opinion, quite good, but also to my R99 and Alternator. The last and most recent thing they added was an event that lasts for 13 days. I know I keep saying this, but this was unique as well. Now, the event already ended, but the event included these. They added rewards including a free Pathfinder skin, legendary weapon skins, and a loading screen, and more for free. There's also skins that cost metal or real life money. If you've been playing since Season 1, then you probably have enough metal to buy one of the skins. That being said, there's rewards for everyone. That's not the only thing added. A new mode is also added. This mode is exclusive to shotguns and snipers, as well as EVA shields only, making you attack people if you want better shields. While Apex is the most popular battle royale, I'll still put it as one of the best. Due to the popular trends of Battle Royale, Call of Duty went again to the spotlight as well. Warzone is a free-to-play Battle Royale game where you drop as a solo, duo, or trio onto the map. This would take a different turn similar to Apex. Once you die, you have another chance to hop back in. In Apex, your teammates can pick up your card and respawn you out of a respawn beacon, while in Warzone, you go to the Gulag. In the Gulag, you spawn an arena with a random weapon. Two people would spawn in the Gulag, and whoever survived would spawn back into the map with another shot. If they died again, their teammate could buy them back again at the shop. Warzone also had another mode called Plunder. In this mode, you'd have infinite lives where you'd kill or loot for money. Once you had the money, you'd drop the money off in a money balloon or a helicopter. The money balloon could carry a minimum amount, while the helicopter could carry as much as you put in. Warzone is popping off as of right now. Players like Vickstar has gained lots of attention for a skill in this game. The game became so popular because of Drama Alert's host, Keemstar, made Warzone Wednesdays. In Warzone Wednesdays, players would compete for a money prize. This game is definitely one of the most popular Battle Royale games ever made. Now that we've covered the big boys of the scene, let's go to the less popular ones. Mobile games. All these are basically all clones of each other. Games like Free Fire, Knives Out, and Rules of Survival were pretty popular. Rules of Survival had 50 million plus downloads. These games were pretty popular for a while, but they soon died out fairly quickly. This could bring people who didn't have a console or a PC to enjoy this genre, before PUBG Mobile or Fortnite Mobile came out, of course. Now for the last thing. My favorite battle royale is Apex Legends. Now before I start, I have to say that this is my opinion. Please respect my opinion, and if your opinion differs from mine, you can leave it in the comments. Now on with my opinion. For me personally, I had the most fun with this game. With all the unique abilities and teamwork, this is quite fun. When I won a game, I actually felt like I won. Beating players in different ways and talking with your teammates felt great. Everyone had a purpose on the team. One could scout, one could heal, and one could defend. 
This would make players work together rather than being held back and carried. Some of you watching may agree or disagree, but either way, Battle Royale has started a new community of gamers and is still popular today. This has been Verbo, I hope you enjoyed the video, and peace.